sing ever praise in sweet accord holy holy Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I welcome you to the Cathedral of the Assumption Carlo for our Chrism Mass. A Chrism Mass we realize and accept in a very different context this year. Everything we do, everything we say, every activity now is conditioned by the coronavirus. COVID-19. You are joining us through the Candle Facebook page live stream, the iCatholic YouTube channel and also the Cathedral webcam. You are most welcome. It's great you are part of tonight's celebration. In normal circumstances, many of you would be here, in fact, from the early evening. But these are not normal circumstances. We have done what we can do to ensure as many of you as possible, priests and people, can remotely join with us from every end of the diocese and beyond. Tonight is always a night which celebrates our diocese in its fullness. Priests, religious, deacons and lay people together. I'm very conscious of our priests. 58 cocooned now 10 days, all very much abiding by the regulations and norms to stay at home. On a night when you would normally publicly renew your priestly promises, you will do so in your own presbyteries and homes. 47 of our priests witness on the front line these days, and you are very much in my prayers and all our prayers this night. Your witness to ministry in the face of COVID-19 is inspirational and deeply appreciated. I include the wide tapestry that encompasses our diocese, including our permanent deacons, our religious, and of course the huge numbers of you, lay people, women and men, who contribute immensely and support the life of our parishes, and by extension, the story of our diocese. Across our world, we have seen a great need for a tangible sign 
of God's presence amongst us. The oils blessed and consecrated this evening offer that very tangible reality. While the circumstances are very different than any of us might have hoped for or wished for, our world, our church, our parishes, our dioceses need these oils more than ever at this time. And they need the ministry that accompanies these oils. So dear friends, in this holy of weeks, on this sacred night, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christe eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Kyrie. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord a day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all those who mourn and to give them for ashes a garland, for mourning robe the oil of gladness, for despondency praise. But you, you will be named priests of the Lord. They will call you ministers of our God. I reward them faithfully and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their race will be famous throughout the nations, their descendants throughout the peoples. All who see them will admit that they are a race whom the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He loves us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us a line of kings, priests to serve his God and Father. To him then be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, and to proclaim the Lord's year of favour. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. The Gospel of the Lord.
it is a very different context for a chrism mass this year. And yet I have purposefully continued with the celebration on the traditional date the chrism mass normally falls on in our diocesan calendar. The dreaded coronavirus has in a matter of a couple of weeks turned upside down our economy, our personal lives, and our understanding of normal. We are waving through perspex and glass at grandparents and vulnerable loved ones currently cocooned. We are working remotely if we are lucky still to hold on to our job. We are staying at home and abiding by regulations akin to a curfew or a lockdown. These seem like war times, and the battle is a virus we are trying to control. The country has, in the past couple of weeks, shifted gear completely from cruising in fifth to a struggling second. The church is no different, because it is embedded into our society our community. While church buildings are regretfully closed in order to protect the vulnerable and those most at risk from contracting this virulent virus, our pastoral and spiritual outreach continues unabated in every parish and across the diocese. Prayer continues maybe better than ever before in homes, aided and assisted by the use of modern technology. And I hear feedback with all kinds of messages. Someone followed a ceremony on Facebook Live. Someone else never knew their parish had a webcam until they logged on. And someone was moved enough to send an email to say how much the Holy Hour meant to them. And tonight, Luke's text is unrolled before our very eyes, into all our homes, where the Spirit of the Lord anoints each one of us to become intentional disciples of his good news, of his freedom, and most of all tonight, of his healing. Justifiably, we could have postponed the chrism celebration because it always is an event that celebrates the diocese. We could have rescheduled it for the summer months, as someone said, once this pandemic has passed. But who knows when that will be? I firmly believe we need to reimagine church, reimagine liturgy, reimagine community, maybe even reimagine faith to make some sense of the vista that opens out to me tonight from where I'm standing this chrism evening. Empty pews, empty seats, empty churches, an empty cathedral. And yet they aren't empty. And the cathedral isn't empty, anything but. You are here, each one of you, digitally connected with the church you love, the faith you profess, the diocese you are so proud of. Perhaps we have always found it a challenge to be present as a church on the edges on the margins, in the field hospitals, a much-loved image of Pope Francis. And here now it falls right into our laps in this Holy Week 2020. Why delay the blessing of the oil of the sick when so many are in need of anointing and healing this very night? I purposefully chose, with the support of priests and people, to continue as planned 
with tonight's celebration. You at home, priests and people, are an intrinsic part of this celebration. While you may not be physically here, I'm holding you very much in my heart. Where you will be sitting, the parish banner you will be carrying, when you would arrive, the banter in the sacristy, and of course the conviviality afterwards over in the college. All that will have to wait for another day, another event, and that day will come. But to tonight, our Chrism Mass. I think these past few weeks have brought all of us to our knees in many respects. Maybe tonight we know someone struggling on a ventilator with the coronavirus. They are in our prayers. Maybe we celebrated a requiem mass within the very restricted norms. Everyone respected the guidelines. The pain of the bereaved remains very much in our prayers. We haven't seen family in weeks. We have to discern new ways of keeping in touch, keeping connected. We hold each of you in our prayers. Oils are what keeps engines ticking over, and the sacramental oils that are to be blessed and consecrated this night are what keeps the engine of our parish, every parish, and of our diocese ticking over. We look forward and hope to using these oils in sacramental moments once restrictions are lifted and it is safe to do so. I think we will be a richer church community for how we face these COVID-19 days. When we can shake someone's hand again, let us appreciate more the encounter. When we arrange to meet up with someone, let's have better conversations. When our parks and playgrounds reopen, let's make those moments last. A crisis brings out the best, and we are seeing the best in people every day. Very conscious of those serving on our front lines, particularly healthcare teams and their families, those working in hospitals and nursing homes in our own diocese. Perhaps most of all, what this time seems to be telling us is that we are all vulnerable. No matter how powerful we are, some things are just beyond our control, completely outside our control. And my greatest concern is that we need to nourish and mind our mental health these days. The two kilometer walk or exercise should be looked on as much as a stimulant as a restriction. Don't be in fear. Don't be afraid. It's reasonable to be unsure, unsettled, upended. But remember the oil of the sick. A great demand these days includes in its ritual text health in mind and body. What will the new normal look like as we try to reimagine church, liturgy, community, and faith? No one honestly knows. It will be different, but I think it will be rooted in the connections we are now making. Perhaps we were too busy at the wrong things. Maybe our priorities were a little askew. As Pope Francis alluded to at his Orbe at Orbe blessing, we as a society have been deaf to the cry of the poor and the cry of the earth. 
There is much to do in the new church that must be born out of this current crisis. A home, a parish, a diocese gives us that great sense of connection. We're all interconnected. Look after one another. Inspired by the narrative of St. Luke's Gospel, that's what our church does best this chrism night. And that's where these new oils are put to best use in our care for the most vulnerable and the most broken of our brothers and sisters. Amen. We're coming to the renewal of priestly promises and I especially invite our priests at home to very much renew your promises now with the script that's been sent out to you in the last couple of days, very much in our hearts and minds this night. Beloved sons, wherever you are this night, in this cathedral, in your home or elsewhere, be assured of the companionship of your bishop and God's holy people as I invite you now to renew the promises you once made and join in saying together. I renew my dedication to Christ as priest of his new covenant. At my ordination, I accepted the responsibilities of the priesthood out of love for the Lord Jesus and his church. I resolve to unite myself more closely to Christ and to try to become more like him by bringing his peace and love to my brothers and sisters at the joyful sacrifice of my own ambition. I resolve to be a faithful minister of the mysteries of God, to celebrate the Eucharist and other liturgical services with sincere devotion. I resolve to imitate Jesus Christ, the head and the shepherd of the church, by teaching the Christian faith for the well-being of the people I am sent to serve. May the Lord Jesus, in his love, keep us close to him always. And now I turn to you great lay people at home as we pray for our priests. As for you, dearest sons and daughters who are watching and praying with us this night, I ask you to pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as your ministers of Christ, the High Priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us shepherds and flock to eternal life. Amen. And so, Bishop Dennis, I ask you to bless the oil of the sick. Thank you. 
Father of all consolation, who willed to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son. Listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, upon this isle in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that by your blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. So, Bishop Dennis, we ask you to bless, please, the oil of catechumens. God, strength and protection of your people, who have made the oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ, they may undertake with a generous heart the labours of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters, they may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. And so, We ask you, Bishop Dennis, to bless the oil of chrism. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil. May those who are signed with it outwardly be inwardly anointed and made worthy of divine redemption. O God, author of the sacraments and bestower of life, we give you thanks for your ineffable goodness for in the ancient covenant you foreshadowed the mystery of sanctifying oil, and in the fullness of time you will that it might shine forth uniquely in your beloved Son. And when your Son, our Lord, had saved the human race through the Paschal mystery, he filled your church with the Holy Spirit and wonderfully endowed her with heavenly gifts, so that through her the work of salvation in the world might be brought to completion. From that time onward, to the sacred mystery of chrism, you have so bestowed the riches of your grace upon all humanity, that your sons and daughters, born again in the cleansing waters of baptism, are strengthened by the anointing of the Spirit, and conformed to your Christ, they share in his prophetic, priestly, and kingly office. Therefore, we beseech you, O Lord, that by the power of your grace, this mingling of fragrance and oil may become for us a sacrament of your blessing. Pour out in abundance the gifts of the Holy Spirit on our brothers and sisters anointed with this oil, adorned with the splendor of holiness, the places and things signed by these sacred oils, but above all by the mystery of this oil, bring to completion the growth of your church until she reaches that measure of fullness in which you, 
resplendent with eternal light, will be all in all with Christ in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for the good of his holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We raise them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your worthy servant, your Bishop, all clergy, religious, and all God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We fondly remember in our Mass on this chrism evening Father Jack Walsh, Father Jim Sharkey, Father Willie Stack, Father Connor Maloney, Father Joe O'Connor, Father Tommy Barrett, Father PJ Melican, Father Joe Miller. 
Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And find the glory of your ears now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I now pray with you at home the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there. 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Loving and healing God, we, the people of Kildare and Lachlan, turn to you in prayer, confident that you are with us and with all people in every moment. We stand before you as people of hope, trusting in your care and protection. May your faithful love support us and soothe the anxiety of our hearts. Generous God, fill us with compassion and concern for others, young and old, that we may look after one another in these challenging days. Bring healing to those who are sick with the virus and be with their families. May those who have died rest in your eternal embrace. Comfort their family and friends. Strengthen and protect all medical professionals caring for the sick and all who work in our medical facilities. Give wisdom to leaders in healthcare and governance that they may make the right decisions for the well being of people. We pray in gratitude for all those in our country who will continue to work in the days ahead in so many fields of life for the sake of us all. 
Bless them and keep them safe. O God of creation and life, we place ourselves in your protection. May the mantle of your peace enfold us this day and tomorrow. Saint Bridget, pray for us. Saint Conlet, pray for us. Saint Lazarian, pray for us. May all the saints of God pray for us. Amen. Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'm very conscious that this has been a very different chrism mass but I also realize it gives a very strong message that our dioceses, our parishes, are very much communities of life, communities of faith, communities of hope in the face of this corona pandemic. I very much hold everyone in my prayers tonight affected by the coronavirus. I thank all of you for joining with a very small number here in the cathedral. It's great that you managed to stay with us for the entire ceremony. At least I hope you did. I thank all those responsible for organizing tonight's liturgy. Julie and Liam and members of the Commission for Liturgical Formation, for enhancing our liturgy with splendid music, Liam, Maria and Julianne, for relaying it into your homes and into, onto your electronic devices, Bill and Tom. I thank Nora, our reader, and Janet in the sacristy. In some ways, it's a new way of being church, a digital church community. I want to especially thank our priests. I want to thank very warmly the priests here with me, my vicars who are the backbone to me in the diocese, John, Paul, Michal, and Tom, and Rory, the administrator here, and the many priests watching from your presbyteries and homes. I know these days are tough, and particularly people who are cocooned find them very tough because they're so central to the life of the church. But this is for the good of the country and for the good of the containment of the virus. So thank you for heeding to all the regulations. The oils will not be processed out at the end of our Mass, but will be distributed throughout the diocese at a later date when it is safe to do so. I know all our people and all our priests would have wanted on a night like tonight to wish Paul well on his appointment as Bishop-elect in a Connery. There will be another occasion for that. I hold Paul and all of you in my prayers that this pandemic will pass. But most of all, that we will be renewed with a great sense of purpose in our common mission to be healers in a broken and bruised world. My dear people, on this night the oil of the sick, oil of catechumens and the oil of chrism have been blessed and consecrated for use in our diocese. These holy oils will touch the lives of many in the coming year. When the time is right, they will be entrusted to our vicars to share with you, our priests, who will bring them to your parishioners in your parish. Friends in Christ, at that time, welcome with joy these holy oils into your parishes, that they may serve as visible signs of the loving embrace of God in our lives 
and an embrace that is with us very much these very days. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh, 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 oh,